like much from here, does it? The seas off Sussex tend to look rather grey and, well, pretty lifeless, really. But don't be fooled. Beneath this choppy and rather uninspiring surface, there's a world of different habitats and wildlife that's every bit as varied and full of wonder as the one we're used to seeing up here. There are ancient river gorges and tall undersea cliffs. There are sandy and rocky substrates which all provide a home for numerous fish, crabs, sea anemones and those masters of stealth, cuttlefish. But our inshore waters are in grave danger from things like overfishing and dredging of the seabed for gravel. Now many people don't realise that the Wildlife Trust have been working just as hard to protect our marine environment as they do for wildlife on land. We've been conducting surveys and monitoring programmes, using both trained divers and local people to establish just what marine wildlife we've got left and where the best undersea habitats are. We've been running education programmes to make sure that children and adults are fully informed about the variety and the plight of our marine life and we've been talking to fishermen, industry and other stakeholders about what their needs are. Unfortunately, we can't just buy bits of the seabed and turn them into the nature reserves. The law doesn't allow anyone to do that. Instead, in partnership with others, we've identified 127 marine sites around the English and Welsh coasts, some of them off Sussex, that we can turn into marine conservation zones. These are sites where some of our best and most vulnerable wildlife habitats occur, where sea anemones and corals could flourish, where crabs and lobsters could shelter and fish could spawn and grow, replenishing their severely depleted stocks. Now we've heard that the Department of Food and Rural Affairs proposed to consider only 31 of the 127 sites that we've identified as being in most need of protection. That's not enough. We need a lot more than 31 if there's going to be a proper network of protected sites where our marine wildlife can come back from the brink. It's a really disappointing decision that will mean much of our most precious marine wildlife could be destroyed through overfishing, seabed trawling and gravel dredging. If the seabed weren't so invisible to most of us, if we could see with our own eyes the damage that's being done, nobody would allow this to go on. What happens to the seabed is the equivalent on dry land of clearing the tropical rainforests, or ploughing up our ancient woodlands, or killing every animal in the forest for the sake of the few we want to eat. We're at a critical point in deciding the future for the health of our marine environment. Even these incredibly rare seahorses are at risk film just off Selsey in West Sussex. It's really important that we continue our work to fight for the protection of our seas, but we're running out of funds. We desperately need £35,000 to carry on with this work for the next year and we're asking for your help. If, like us, you think that our living seas are worth fighting for, then please help us to reach our target. Any donation you make, large or small, will be used to continue with our Living Seas campaign. It's easy, just click on the donate button to guide you through the process. Or if you prefer, you can send us a cheque made out to Sussex Wildlife Trust. Thank you. Our marine life needs your help now more than ever.